Today we're going to be talking about how to connect barcode readers to an AGP or an LT3000 series HMI. Overall, uh, we can connect a number of different barcode reader scanner devices to the AGP or LT3000 using the GP Pro EX software to configure it. The objective of this presentation, at the end of it, we'll know how to uh, program a barcode reader in a data display as an alternative to a keypad data entry, how to program a barcode reader direct to internal registers or internal devices so that we can have barcode reading without operator intervention. We'll also look at some of the other options and uh, best practices for interfacing a barcode reader to these devices. And we'll look at some tips on setting up and testing a barcode reader without having one actually um, to play with. Okay, let's take a look at the physical connection of the barcode readers to the AGP and LTs. You can connect up to two barcode readers uh, to an AGP or an LT, depending on the model used. You can use serial devices on COM1 and COM2, if available. And you can use USB, certain USB devices on the USB port, which is always available on every LT or AGP. We also have a USB to serial interface as an add-on option, which allows you to use a serial barcode reader with, uh, for example, an LT3201, which doesn't have a serial port. If you're using a USB card reader or barcode reader, then you can only use one on any unit. There's nothing in the software that will let you distinguish uh, multiple units, even if you physically can connect them. The other thing about USB devices is that they are not plug and play. We provide a, a built-in driver to the firmware and it's not possible to add on or install any other drivers. There is a list of uh, tested devices that we know uh, have worked and will work with this uh, USB driver and we'll talk more about that later in the presentation. Although I said uh, we can only use two barcode readers with the uh, AGP or LT, uh, some manufacturers do provide uh, network solutions so that they present multiple barcode readers to a single COM port and then uh, the data packet from those readers contains node information etc. So as far as the AGP is concerned it looks like one barcode reader even though it may be networked to, uh, to a dozen. So when you get a brand new barcode reader, you have to configure it. Um, and some manufacturers provide a PC-based setup utility to do that. The one that's shown here is actually from uh, Keyence. And uh, note that um, in addition to which barcodes it supports, it provides a number of uh, different COM settings. And um, if you want to keep things simple, then uh, make sure that you set the delimiter the uh, terminator, if you like, to the data packet to a simple carriage return. Uh, don't include any header information like STX or anything else and don't enable any handshaking and that'll, that'll usually be your simplest setup. We can support uh, uh, customized data packets uh, using our transfer to internal memory um, but if you want to keep it simple then keep it like this. Other manufacturers, instead of providing a PC-based utility, will provide a programming chart with a series of printed barcodes. So this is kind of fun because the uh, barcode readers actually uh, set themselves up by scanning these codes out of the charts. And we also have um, uh, applications where customers have taken these uh, barcodes, uh, turned them into JPEGs, and then placed them on an AGP screen and that allows you to 
um, actually set up a, a new barcode reader out of the box by going to a configuration page on the AGP and then scanning the appropriate codes. Uh, if you're going to do that, uh, make sure that the JPEG import, um, the rendering is set to fine as opposed to coarse. Um, but um, we have had some uh, good success with that. The data display uh, is a normal data display which we would associate with a pop-up keypad and here we're going to look at how we can associate it with a barcode reader uh, either instead of a pop-up keypad or in addition to. So <clears throat> the first thing you have to do is to uh, go into the uh, peripheral settings, the input equipment settings and select one of two barcode readers. There's a maximum of two barcode readers available on the AGP and LT3000 series uh, unless you count networked barcode readers. So the first thing we need to do is we uh, set up uh, barcode reader number one and we can specify whether that barcode reader is going to be USB or on the COM port we're going to specify that we're going to save the data in a data display and we're going to choose the key codes as English 101 as opposed to Japanese. Next we go to the normal data display part itself. Um, we choose the text mode of that and then we specify uh, the address where the data is going to be stored. The data uh, entered by the barcode reader will be stored in the specified address. The data length um, for how many uh, ASCII characters are going to be read in is specified here uh, and the number of displayed characters will automatically determine the successive registers needed to store that data. We need to make sure that we allow uh, input to be checked and once we do that uh, we can now specify here the number of uh, displayed characters. 15 characters will require 8 16-bit words to store it uh, or 4 32-bit words. Because we've specified uh, data entry, uh, we can now uh, add the input to the barcode reader. Note that we can also still check the enable pop-up keypad, which allows the barcode reader to be used um, in conjunction with the pop-up keypad. So for example, uh, if an operator uh, primarily uses the barcode reader to avoid making mistakes, then in the event that a barcode becomes unreadable, they can uh, actually type in the, the data with a pop-up keypad as they would normally. The uh, selection of the data entry uh, is either by touch as we would with a pop-up keypad. We touch the data display and we are then enable the input or it can be uh, controlled by a bit, which means we have the opportunity to enter sequences etc uh, within the PLC or within scripting so we can have a uh, specify the uh, order in which uh, data is entered. So because the barcode data is going straight into a data display that means that uh, you should use it when the operator already selects the display screen and the data entry position before the code is read. In other words, if we have a data display on page 27, then the display must be on 27 and the uh, data entry must be enabled in order to, uh, to do that. The advantage of using the data display mode is that the same barcode reader can be used to enter 
multiple data items on different pages at different times. The alternative is the one that we'll see in the next few pages, which is to use internal memory. And in this situation, we're just going to read the barcode directly into some internal registers, and it requires no operator intervention at all. So we'll use this when uh, the code needs to be read without the operator pre-selecting the screen and the data entry position. Um, it is possible to use two barcode readers. Uh, when we use two barcode readers simultaneously, then we need to uh, use the internal memory. It's not possible to have two barcode readers and into uh, different data displays because you can only select one data display at a time. Um, so if basically overall, if you need to have automatic operation, i.e. scan a barcode, trigger a Descript, access a database, etc., then you're going to be using the internal memory version of the barcode reader. And this is it. In the original um, uh, equipment settings uh, for the barcode reader, we now choose internal device instead of data display. The other settings are the same, either USB or COM1 and the English 101 key keyboard. And the difference is down here where we can now specify the internal address, in this case LS20, and here uh, we specify the internal uh, device address where that data is going to be going to be stored. And that data has to be an internal register. Uh, it can't be uh, directly to, to a PLC because of the timing issues that that might incorporate. When you store the data into internal memory, you'd specify the start address, in our case LS20, and the data structure becomes as follows. The first uh, register in that sequence, the number of bytes read by the barcode reader is stored. The next one is a status register, and then after that, the data are actually read from the barcode. So in terms of the status register, uh, also known as the uh, error contents, um, it'll be a one as soon as the data is read. It'll be a zero until then. Uh, it'll be a two if there's a, a code read error and data isn't stored. And it'll be a three if uh, the number of data exceeds uh, what was specified. Uh, we can see that we later on that we can actually specify a, a limit on the number of data that can be read in. Bear this one in mind, it catches people out um, that we said store the data to LS20, which would be this register here, means that the first displayable data is now going to be at LS22. So here we are. Uh, we now go to a data display to display it. This isn't necessary. You, you can read barcodes uh, into internal memory and not ever display them. But if you want to, and you normally do, then uh, you can use a normal uh, text display as before. However, this time we're not allowing input because the data is going to go in directly from uh, the barcode reader into internal memory. And, um, and then here you'll see that we, we, to display it, we display LS22 through 29. Okay. And that's about it. The other option that you get, um, in the extended settings is to enable a read completion bit, which is set. And this can be internal or external. So this one can actually be in the PLC. And that could trigger some additional processing. Um, you can also specify either unlimited data or a specific data size. And we saw that there's a read error if the data coming in exceeds a certain size. 
uh, the read completion bit, if you do use it, be sure to reset it in whatever logic follows on. Um, otherwise, you won't see that rising edge. Just some tips for testing. Uh, when you're using serial barcode readers, you can use hyperterminal on a PC to simulate the codes. We'll show that on the next page. Um, when you're configuring the barcode reader itself, always set up the data uh, for 1D barcode readers to output plain ASCII followed by a carriage return, uh, which is ASCII code 13. Don't include any other non-printable ASCII, such as STX, ETX, or line feeds. Uh, these are typically framing characters that, that can appear within the barcode. Uh, if you avoid using those, plain ASCII, carriage return, just as if you typed it in from the keyboard. Which brings me on to my next point, which is that USB barcode readers are set up just like USB keyboards and therefore you can use a USB keyboard uh, to emulate the barcode reader directly on the AGP or LT. Finally, although we call them barcode reader interfaces, there are many other devices such as magnetic card readers and RFID readers that can produce compatible USB or serial output. And the clue is right there. If we can type something in in hyperterminal in, into a serial port uh, in plain ASCII followed by a carriage return, if a USB card uh, barcode reader uh, acts like a USB keyboard, then all we need to see out of these mag card readers or RFID readers is the ability to produce plain ASCII followed by a carriage return. And in the case of the USB um, devices, uh, the USB devices usually have a, a mode which they call keyboard wedge. And that keyboard wedge is the, uh, the compatible USB keyboard mode um, that can really expand the number of connectable devices. And here we're just showing you how you can use Hyperterminal to capture and emulate those serial barcode readers. A Hyperterminal is included in Windows XP. You can set up the comms parameters to match the AGP or LT. And you can use Hyperterminal to display and capture data from those barcode readers. Um, capturing data from a barcode reader uh, directly into Hyperterminal uh, is great uh, because uh, once you've done that you can then replay it uh, replay that captured data back to do a, a, a real emulation of the exact data that will be coming out of the barcode reader and finally uh, you can free type the barcodes just directly into hyperterminal have them go into the AGP hit enter at the end and that's another simulation that's a quick introduction into uh, things you can do with interfacing barcode readers into our AGP and LT series. Uh, if you want more information, take a look at the reference manual. Uh, go to the table of contents and look for the barcode input section and you should find everything you need to know and a lot more right there. So thank you very much for your time.